we've gotten into the habit of settling for less. If you overshoot, if you try too much, if you expect too much, you're going to get nothing. So you lower the standard a little bit, make it a little bit easier so that the child won't be discouraged. So I joke about it. I say, you know, everybody wants their child to be better than them. I want my children to be more chsiddish than me. And since I don't want to make it hard on them, so I try not to be so chsiddish myself, give them a little, you know, head start. It doesn't work. Children are not asking for an easier Yiddishkeit. They're not. They're not asking for a more practical chsiddus. They're not. They say it. They don't mean it. So when they say, why do I have to do all this? Other people don't do this. They're not saying I want to do less. They're saying I want to do more and be better, but you're not helping me. You're not showing me. You're not inspiring me. So if you're not so excited about it, why should I be? But they want more and better. They don't want less and smaller. They're, they're idealistic. Every teenager is idealistic. Every teen or teenager wants to do things that will change the world. So if you say to them, okay, if you can't say the whole Tehillim, say a little bit. What are you doing? They want the real thing, probably more than we want it. So give them more, not less. And this is true of everything in our community. Nobody wants less. Less is not a blessing. Less is not good. Less is not impressive. Nobody wants less. They want better. Now some of them think if you dress more modern or you do, then it's better. So fine, you have to correct them. Show them that it's not better. But look at what they're trying to do. They're not trying to be less. They're trying to be better. But they're a little confused. And this is true everywhere. It's true on Shlichus. You want to invite people into the Chabad house. You want to be Makar of people. You want them to come to Fabrengens. You want them to come to the oil. You want them to get involved. So you tell them a little bit? No. You tell them everything. You show them what inspires you. Not that, eh, for them it's enough if they uh, don't drive on Shabbos. Not enough. They also want to be challenged. They also want to know that you're in inviting them to do something that is earth-shattering, that changes the world, that brings Moshiach. So if you see that something is failing, children are not getting excited about chsiddus, it's because you didn't give them enough, not because you're trying to give them too much. There's an old saying, three things must affect a person. Money must make you arrogant. If you have money and you're not arrogant, you don't have enough money. Mashke must make you drunk. If you drink and you're not drunk, you didn't drink enough. And Hasidus has to make you edel. If you're not any more edel than you were before, you haven't learned enough. So if you see children who supposedly have been learning, but there's no edelkeit, don't teach them less. Don't expect less. Give them the real thing. Give him more and it will have an effect, because it must have an effect. You can't learn Hasidus and not become edel. Can't. It's like drinking and not getting drunk. You can't. So what does it mean, give him more? 
It doesn't mean scream at him more. It doesn't mean punish him more. It means go a little deeper. Look into whatever it is that he's supposed to be learning or doing. Look a little deeper. The deeper part is more impressive, more compelling, more inspiring, and more enjoyable. Because the more Hasidus, the better. So if he is not feeling that, if he doesn't feel compelled, he doesn't feel inspired, and he doesn't feel the pleasure, it's because he didn't get it. You didn't show him what's really there. I just use this example. A guy who grew up in yeshiva, went through the whole system, was not so inspired. He still comes around, but he's not so involved. One day he says to me, he says, you work with a lot of people. I found a program that everyone should know about. It's a fantastic program. It's so good. You sign up and you go for a couple of weeks and they do and they train you and they do. What is it? It's called impulse control methods. It's so good. He says, since I started doing it, my day is a day. I get things done. I feel more in control. He says, how come nobody taught us this in yeshiva? I said, they really did. They called it a scafia. He says, that's what it meant? So why did he reject it while he was in yeshiva? Because he had no idea what it was. Every time he heard the word escafia, it, it felt like, okay, he can't do this, he can't do that. Felt like a policeman. He goes to this program where you learn impulse control. Oh, that's like a sergeant. I come out of there like a mensch. A policeman doesn't make a mensch out of you. So he heard the words escafia a hundred times, a thousand times. He hated it every time. And now he finds impulse control. And he thinks, wow, that's impressive. That's a great thing. Everyone should have this. Yes, everyone should. Not after you're married with four children. When you're 14 and start learning chassidus, you find out that impulse control is a wonderful thing. Makes a mensch out of you. So how come nobody translated the word iskafia so that the poor kid can understand and appreciate what you're offering him? So he rejected it because he doesn't want? He had no idea what he was rejecting. So this is the moral of the story. If a kid says, I'm not interested, he's telling you, you're not giving him enough. You're not making it real enough. You're not making it rich enough. You're not making it challenging enough. So let's make it real. Let's try to educate our children, be mechanach our children, to develop a tainug in things a little more edel than what they're already, where they're already at, raise them level after level by giving them a chayis, not a spanking. <laughs> and that's why the discipline by chassidim, at least by chabad chassidim, is minimal. Because you don't develop a chayas and a pleasure from punishment. So the worst thing I've ever heard in my life so far. See, I'm optimistic. The worst thing I've heard so far is when a, a, a young man sat down to learn Tanya for the first time in his life. And he said, so that's Tanya? I never knew. 
I thought Tanya was the knas and the punishment you get for coming late to shear. We want people to feel like Tanya is a punishment, or you want people to feel like Tanya is the, is the most pleasurable experience in the world. So I heard this from a young woman who had become observant only a year earlier. Her husband still wasn't, but he was getting there. I had an eight-year-old boy. And she says very innocently, Derech Agav, she says, oh, my eight-year-old, he knows that if he doesn't treat his sister nicely, he won't be able to daven that day. I won't let him. What do we do? The exact opposite. Stop fighting. Go daven. <laughs> and we do that all the time. What are you doing? What's wrong with you? Go daven. So there. Now you're punished. And they say, how come children don't like to daven? Who likes to be punished? One of the best ways to do this is to go back to those things that gave you chayas, the things you enjoyed, the things that gave you pleasure in Edelkeit, in a chsiddush story, in a pedek tanya, in a sicha, in a, mit, in a mifza, a mitzvah. Where is your tainu? Let your children know. Let them see. It's the best thing.